Cousin Miriam, what's good? Executive producer, Azariah Malone, Cartagena. Still not on set. Shout out to my brother, Drake. Also co-executive producer. Uh, showed up today to play you that one song. He most <laughs> likely will leave immediately after. Uh, what's good, y'all? Y'all see this shit? I'm going to take a pic later and um, take a pic with the whole outfit so y'all can see what it is, man. Shout out to Terrellish. Shout out to the 5001 Flavors Massive. I got something really, you know what I'm saying? I ain't going to lie to you, man. You know, I got a, a beautiful phone call today from my brother P. Diddy. And he said, come over, man. Come over after the show. Start looking at houses around this island because... That's what the big show about to get you. Sheesh. Sheesh. Man. Just when I thought I was doing good. Shit. Tonight, what an amazing show tonight. My guests. Oh, shit. Play that shit. Oh, they can't let you be here. Can you start? This how we feel tonight. This how we feel tonight, baby. This how we feel tonight. This how we feel tonight. This shit, they call me this shit boogies. This shit boogies. You Alex is going to rock. Stop Drayden. 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 That's what we doing. <laughs> uh, muscle man Randy Savage is in the building. Rich player to God came in with the muscles. Uh, damn, Rich, why you something else? Fan Mio, you want to connect one on one with your favorite artist? There's no other place to go but Fan Mio. F A N I M I O. Day one. We call him a day one to the show here. A lot of day ones right here are uh, that been keeping it real with us since we first started. Shows on Revolt TV, Tuesdays at 10 p.m., soon to be on other platforms in a major way. Nobody's bigger than the biggest show. You know that. I ain't got to tell you that. Pretty Lou, what's good, baby? Pretty Lou, what's good? Tonight, we got Isaac Wright. If you've been watching his show on ABC, executive produced by the one and only 50 Cent, it's nothing short of a phenomenal TV show and series. And we're going to get to speak to the real man who... uh is it an attorney at law? I don't want to blow it up. Hey, yo, UFO, yeah, I'm thugging, thugging. You see me, baby. You see me, Matt. You see what I'm doing. Shout out to all the real Fat Joe fans. Uh, it was the 25-year anniversary of... Uh, shout out to Solomon Fan Mio. Um, 25th anniversary of Jealous Ones Envy, my favorite album I've ever done. Uh, in fact, I ain't listened to it in years. And ever since it was the anniversary, I've been working out to it every day. And it's pretty hard, man. It's pretty, uh, you know, damn, man. I wish I could spit that raw 2020. That thing is like, sheesh. Shout out to my brother Armando. Yeah, yeah, this show, this ain't no regular, this ain't no regular Degler. Tomorrow night, being the Buster Rounds brought him up, living legend Dallas Austin. Uh, we're going to talk about how he got Puff Daddy his deal, his first major deal. Uh, how he put so many people on and he produced for TLC. Who else uh, Dallas produced for like that? Monica. Monica, TLC. TLC. Uh, uh, too many people. Fishbone, The Rock Group. 
Um, another bad creation. Another Boys creation. to men. Boys to men. Dallas yeah, too Austin. Many. Too many. Uh, Madonna. Too no many. regular Degla. Uh, Madonna. Too many people. Madonna. Uh, Wednesday. Songstress. And playing sexiness. From the Bay Area. Kalani. Thursday LA Laker guys, you know. And I'm hoping to get my favorite comedian. Well, one of my favorite comedians. But I obviously know this guy don't uh, pay attention to, to his messages and Instagram. It's a guy named Lavelle Crawford. He's the fat guy that wears the big suits and his head looks, it looks like he an Eminem with peanut in human form. Uh, but he's hilarious. If you go on Netflix and look up his stand-up comedy, uh, Lavelle Crawford is phenomenal. So I think we got Lavelle Thursday as well. Let's see if, we, is, if Isaac Wright is here yet. No, he's an attorney at law. You know, he should be like really on time. He ain't there yet, but you know. And so, G Spin, what's good? Yeah, nobody, uh, the biggest of all shows, G Spin. You ain't got to tell me, but I'll accept it from you. It's a great compliment coming from a guy who's run radio for so long. Johnny Nunez, love you too. I want to shout out my brother, uh, Jamie Fox. Heartwarming uh, post he just put with his sister passed away. Um, I know my sister passed away. My sister was giving birth and she lost the baby and she went into coma for eight months. So I know how hard it is and I'm praying for uh, Jamie Foxx and his family. Uh, God bless them. I knew her sis his sister, his mother. I met him. We, we celebrate New Year's all the time. And uh, Jamie Foxx, I love you, my brother, man. I hope you can hear me and I want everybody to pray for him as well as... I would like to say, um, rest in peace to Pastor Joe. Now, Pastor Joe was a housing man. He worked for New York Housing. He be, he be, uh, I'm going to tell you these stories because he passed away, but he uh, used to used to be the housing man, you know, to, to, to clean up the, the property and all that. And I remember when I got shot, um, as I was running and all that, he was praying for me. He was a housing man plus pastor. He got to pay the bills. And then after I came home, he was like, listen, bro, you know, I prayed for you. You should change your life. Then he used to see me out there hustling in my projects because he worked in my projects. And he was standing next to me while I was hustling, telling me that God got bigger plans for me, that God, you know, wants me to change my life. And I couldn't see it because I was a young, wild guy. I remember one time we sitting in front of the building. I told this story on Drink Champs. And we didn't know, but there was police in one side of a building and one side of the building. And he came over, man. And he risked himself. And he said, guys, I don't know if y'all got something on y'all, but they're about to come. And I can tell you now, we had a bunch of guns on us. Um, this is, I'm talking about when I was, you know, many, many, many years ago, 30 years ago. And uh, we ran into the building. We ran into my friend's house. Uh, and uh, the cops was like a movie, scrambling, like how the hell they got away. And I remember they was all out the window and my friend's mother lived on the first floor, rest in peace, her name Chiquitina. And Chiquitina smacked the dog shit out of me, smacked my cheek off. This is a little lady, we used to call her Chiquitina, rest in peace. And she smacked my cheek off my face because we, we got our house hot. But Pastor Joe continuously... Uh, inspired me and told me about God and he passed away from Jackson Houses over there. Everybody who can hear me and Pastor Joe's family just know I love him so much and I thank him for uh, just being an angel for me when I was growing up. You know, so rest in peace, Pastor Joe. No. Uh, not yet. I'll, I'll get him. I've just been talking shit. I've been on my, you know, I've been on my, you know, Nah, I don't see him. But what's his, his Instagram is Isaac, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't see him. Comments he put on me also. Okay, so I don't know if I see him there. Yeah, so, you know, tough times, guys. 
Tough times, man. Oh, uh, where's my man Isaac Wright? Look for his comments, guys. If y'all see him, I'm looking for him too. You know? But tell him to send a request and just talk on the comments and we'll pick him up. You know, uh, what an interesting story. Uh, Isaac Wright, this man was falsely accused for kingpin. I, I, I really want him to tell his story. Yeah, I don't see him. I don't see him. Yeah, back and forth projects, man. Uh, you know, Pastor Joe, man, he really, really, uh, man. And it seemed he was there every time I got in trouble. Somehow he mysteriously was there, you know. It felt like he was a, 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 a angel in my life. No bullshit. No over-dramatizing. No exaggeration. You know, the man was always there for me, man. And uh, He's on the comments now. It's sad. I'm looking at the comments. If you can see it, then let me know. He's there, Joe. Where? I'm looking for it. There you go. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. Attorney at Isaac Wright Jr. Attorney at law, Isaac Wright Jr. See the applause, yo, yo, Trey. <laughs> I mean, you working hard. I mean, okay. there you go, there you go. <laughs> yo, put the claps on. Hold up. It's too late. It's too late. <laughs> you know, we ghetto as hell. We got fake claps and everything. Yo, yo. Yeah, hey, my my eyes my eyes are bad, and and I was I was trying to type, and and uh, you know, it just wasn't happening for me. I was I was there for about five minutes. I'm sorry about that. You know, I'm kind of blind, too. I ain't going front for you. I'm getting old, Isaac, you know? <laughs> Shit looking smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. <laughs> I'm like, what do you want me to do? I'm looking at the shit like, you know, but I got it, though. I got you, y'all. Isaac, thank you so much for coming on the Big Big Show tonight. Uh, for those of you out there in the world who don't know who Isaac Wright is, uh, if you've been under a rock, the man got a whole TV show based on his life and his experience on ABC. Uh, so Isaac, what year you got locked up? I actually got locked up uh, in, in, in 89. Um, I didn't go to trial until uh, 91. Um, and around the trial lasted about a month and a half, almost two months. And uh, around April, uh, I, was, I was convicted. And the following month, I was sentenced to uh, life. Uh, plus uh, 70, 70 something years, seventy about 72 years on the other remaining charges. So I'd life plus 70 years. So Isaac, man, when you get life and 72 years, yeah, what are you thinking when you go back to that cell? Like when you go back to that cell, that moment right there, you get life and 72 years. What are you thinking when you go back to that cell? Do you think of killing yourself no. at any point, Isaac? You know, the thing is that the this, this cell never leaves you. And, and I, I say that, I say that in the sense of, you know, everyone wears their history uh, somewhere on their body, whether it's in their mind, their soul, their shoulders, their sleeves, you know, we, we all wear our history. And so, and so that cell has, has never left me. I just, I just understand and have mastered how to manage that and, and, you know, when to, when to kind of suppress uh, some of the feelings that, you know, will continue to come up from time to time when different things happen that reminds me of what happened to me. And, and, and being, an, being an attorney, you know, you're consistently reminded uh, of the injustice that has occurred to you just through the clients that you represent and some of the things that, you know, that you've seen, that you see uh, representing clients and, and seeing other attorneys representing clients in the same situation. And I have friends, you know, that- so Basically that what you're saying and, to me, Isaac, in the most intelligent way you're telling me, you don't like to revisit those feelings. You decompartment, you decompartmentalize that right there. You know, I know I, I have a hard time dealing with death. A lot of my friends got killed, and I, 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 I keep them in memory. I love them, but I gotta move on because it just puts me in a, in a dark space. That's what you're saying. 
there's a there's a thousand and one ways to be a slave, and that's one of them. That's mm. one of them. You know, I go to sleep it, it, at night. I never dream good good dreams. Like I, I always have nightmares every night. My wife tells me, like, "Yo, man, when are you gonna dream a good dream?" And I and she don't understand. I'm like PTSD, post traumatic street disorder. <laughs> like that's shit different. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's yeah, yeah, shit indeed. different. Indeed. And so indeed. I was it. And when right? you they give you 172 years, you just a street guy. Well, this well, kind, what they charge you with? Uh, uh, I was charged one. I was. It was about twelve or twelve or thirteen different charges. One of them was uh, being a drug kingpin, and that's where I got the life sentence. I got the life sentence on the drug kingpin charge, and I got the seventy years, you know, seventy plus years on the on the other charges. I was convicted of everything, you know, and I represented myself at trial. You know, I, I set I set the attorneys aside, and I rolled up my sleeve and 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 went it alone. You, you got to remember something. In your first trial, because, that you got 172 you know, years. It, you you represented yourself. I re represented myself from the very, very beginning. I never I never had a lawyer represent me. I've always represented from the beginning uh, until until I got myself out. Yes. Yeah. Look, um, you know. I, I know, it's, I know it's an insane proposition. I know you, you, you got kind of stuck there, <laughs> and I, I, I understand why. Um, but you got to remember something, and you understand this. Back then, all right, you, uh oh, they're trying. You, you know, have, whenever we talk this real shit, Isaac, they. I can't hear you, Isaac. Isaac, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yo, Rich, you gotta tell him to come back on. Okay. Tell him to come back. I'm sorry about that, guys. You know, shit be freezing up. We don't own the Wi-Fi, but you wanna hear this story. Oh, he got charged with Kingpin. Represented himself, got 172 years in jail, find a way to get out of jail, and after getting out of jail, became a criminal defense attorney himself. So uh, this, this is about as crazy as it gets. If you talk about a, a person turning uh, his life around, uh, this, is, this, is, this is insane. So you want to hear this story, guys. And that's what we like to do. We like to give you stories of inspiration of how redemption of how you can change your life how you can come back how you can become successful again uh sir said i needed him on my case sir you did pretty all right you did five years could have did a whole lot more <laughs> yeah <laughs> Now nah, let's see see if they request. Tell tell homie to uh yeah, yeah. to request. He said he's here. Oh, he's not here no, 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 no. He ain't here yet. Tell him he gotta he gotta do the same thing. Okay. You know, we old school. He might not know the theory, you know what I'm saying? Just like me, but uh he just gotta text that shit. You can do those comments, right? I ain't know that. He just commented. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I didn't see it. They said he did. Fuck, I don't see it. I don't see it. Huh? Yeah, we today see the whole Yanni. Yo, tell Isaac to uh just say I'm here again. Mm-hmm. So you know. There you go. He's there.
Man, this shit work when it wanna work, huh? Yo, there you I go, know. there you go. Yeah. Hey, listen, man, you know, we don't I own the block. We don't own the internet. We just got to play by the rules, you know? Yeah. So, unless, Isaac, unless. so you get 172 years, you go to jail, right? Those are dark yeah. times. I get it. There's barely any inspiration in jail because I've been there, right? Um, How do you get up and say to yourself, I'm going to get myself out of here. Once you have 172 years, how do you, I mean, if, 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 I, if I was your cellmate and you told me that, I'd be telling you you're crazy. You're on drugs. Like, how do you convince yeah, yeah. yourself? Yeah, yeah, I've heard that many times. Yeah, you, how do you convince yourself, yo, I'm getting out of here? Well, um, you know, that's a, that's a hard question to answer because on, on, one, on one end, the, the answer Dropped them again. You know this shit. Every time we talk to real people, bro, this Instagram, I don't know if they like the real. Damn, I think I got to turn this whole shit off myself. Listen, guys, I got to turn it off and turn it back on.